In this week's tech tip video, we're going to cover SwoodCam and how to create some tool paths. So I've got my part open. I've selected the machine that I want to machine this with. I've also created the origin in the correct location. So the next thing that I want to do is maybe add a tool path that's going to cut around the outside of the part. So if I've got some extra material I want to cut off, I'm going to create a contour tool path around the outside. I'm also going to cut this inside profile pocket. I'm going to drill some holes and then I'm going to use a saw blade to cut this bottom profile here. So we're not going to go into too much detail once we get into the tool path. I'm going to show you the concept of how to create the actual tool path itself. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to add in the tools that we want to use to cut these features. So if I'm looking at my tools in my tool crib, I'm just going to add in maybe a finishing tool. So I'll do my contour tool pass with that. Um, I'll come over into my aggregates and I'm going to add in my drilling aggregate. And then I'm also going to add in my saw blade in the X direction. So I can create my program with these three sets of tools. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that. So there's a couple different ways to create tool paths. And the first one would be to use the auto machining techniques. And the other option would be to add in the tool path manually by selecting the geometry. So we're going to go ahead and create the auto tool path first. So what I want to do is I'm going to select the milling button in the top here. So you can see a little menu of buttons at the top here. I'm going to select the milling button. And you can see that there are a whole bunch of different options that come up when I select that. So the first one here is an outline option. So it's going to give us a contour tool pass. We've also got an auto groove. We've got auto pocket, auto flat face, and then auto climax. So I'm going to choose the outline because I want a contour tool path to outline the outside of the part. So I'll choose that outline. Then I need to select which tool I want to use to cut this. So I'm going to choose that finishing cutter and I'm going to choose my contour machining operation. So you can see there's a whole bunch of different operations that I can choose from, and I'll choose contour. I'm going to choose the add button, and you can see all of the different options that come up with this tool path. So again, I'm not going to go through everything in detail, uh, but a few different important options that I do want to point out. We've got our different approach options here. So how do I want to lead into this part? Um, we've got the approach from the actual Z security height. So you can choose how you want to approach from that position. We've got the depth cuts here. And then a few different options with the buttons at the bottom. So if you hover over them, it's actually going to show you exactly what you're changing. Do I want to down cut and up cut? Um, same with all of these options here. It'll actually show you as you hover over those buttons. So the first thing that I want to do is if I'm looking at the actual tool path here, you can see this is my lead in point. If I click anywhere else, I can move that to whatever lead in point that I want to place that. You can also see that it's actually cutting this inside profile as well. So if I use the buttons on the right hand side, we can see select the next profile and it shows me the tool path that's next inside of this feature. So I just want the outside profile. I don't want this inside profile. And how do I choose what it selects when it's an auto tool path? So that's this little button right here. And it says it's called outer and inners. You can kind of see that everything is highlighted in this kind of black color. And if I click on it, you can see now it's just the outside profile and the large inside profiles. If I click on it again, it's just the outside profile. So um, you can choose based on however many times you click on this and it'll choose different options. Now it's just the inside profiles, the larger inside profiles and everything again. So I'm going to click until I just get that outside profile. So once we've got that, uh, we can go ahead and choose the OK button. And now we've got this outline tool path. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate that. If I choose my simulate button, you can see I've got my tool and it's going to simulate from that lead in point and it moves itself around the part. So that's just a really nice simulate option. We do have the simulate at the top here and that's going to simulate the full program uh, once you have more tool paths in there. 
Okay, so the next thing that I want to add in is going to be the actual pocket here. And I didn't add it into the auto contour uh, because I want to show you how you can select this manually as well. So what I like to do is choose the inside face of that profile. So I'm going to click on the inside face and you'll notice that because it's got this little feature on the outside, uh, it doesn't loop all the way around for me. So if it was just a circle, it would already loop around, but this hasn't selected these faces here. So how do I select those as well? Well, I'm just going to choose one of them. And as soon as I click on the milling button, it actually brings up this little face option and it allows me to choose the next face, the previous face, or a full profile, and that's what I want. So if I choose full profile, it's just going to loop all the way around and choose each face for me. So I'll choose the OK button there, and then we come back to this window. So again, I'm going to choose the tool that I want to cut this with, and then I'm going to choose the machining operation that I want. So in this case, maybe I'll do a pocket milling. So I'm going to cut out the full interior of the pocket instead of just the contour. We'll go ahead and choose that Add button. And you can see again, we've got the preview of the actual tool path here, and then all of the different options for that pocketing. So maybe I want to do a spiral entry motion, and I want to start in this position. So I'm going to start in the center here uh, and work my way to the outside. So we'll go ahead and choose the OK button. And now we've got this profile. You'll also notice that the tool paths are showing up underneath the finish cutter. So under each tool, it's going to show the tool paths as well. So let's go ahead and simulate the pocket milling tool path. So you can see it's going to come in and start cutting away from the center point and work its way to the outside. So that's our second tool path. And then we're going to add in the holes. Now with holes, I highly recommend using the auto drilling tool path, mostly because uh, it's going to go ahead and find all of those holes for you. So what we're going to do with this is again, if you want to use the auto tool pathing, we don't choose the geometry. We're just going to choose drilling. And then I'm going to choose the tool that I want to use. So this is going to be the drilling aggregate. We'll choose drill, add, and it automatically selects the tool that needs to be used in order to cut that diameter. So if you don't have the correct diameter tool in your aggregate, it's not going to allow you to create that tool path. So it needs to match the actual diameter in the pad model. We'll go ahead and choose OK. And then we can simulate that one as well. So we'll simulate. And you can see it's using the correct tool from my aggregate and it's cutting each of those holes. Now the last one that I want to add in is going to be the saw blade. So I just need to select the one side of this feature uh, because I basically just want that saw blade to come across and cut within this slot feature. So what I'm going to do is just select the one side. I'm going to choose my milling. This time I don't want to choose any other faces, just want to choose the OK button. I'll choose my saw in the X direction and then I'm going to choose the cut groove option. So we'll go ahead and choose add. And again, you can see the preview of the tool path down here. The one thing that I highly recommend changing uh, for the saw cuts is in the top here. So this is basically going to give you an approach from the outside. So you can actually choose the distance, which is basically your lead in and lead out with the saw blade. Uh, I don't want to do that in this case because it's a closed pocket. So I can use either the top reference or the bottom reference to follow along. So I'm actually going to use the top reference. So it's basically going to choose the top profile of this feature and it's going to follow that profile from the top reference and then it won't cut through uh, the walls. So once I've got that, I can go ahead and choose the OK button. Again, I can simulate that. So again, if you look inside these tools, we can see the tool pass as well. So simulate and we can see the saw blade come across and cut our feature. Thanks for watching.